Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got another Raptor update for you. It's been a little while since I made the last one. I took a little break from the project over Christmas, but I'm back, I'm working on it again, and I'm gonna keep creating these update videos as I progress with the project. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so all the electronics are now installed, and I bought an off-the-shelf power distribution board that can handle the high level of current that I'll be pulling from the battery. The great thing about these boards is that they have onboard regulators that provide output pins for your servos and other hardware such as microcontrollers. The Velcro seem to prove very useful for holding down the ESCs. If I ever need to do maintenance on the car, I can easily remove them or replace them if need be. The wiring is obviously not final because the car is still in development. Things still need to move around, but you can see I did my best to channel the cables into the floor plate, and this will just make it look a lot cleaner and more manageable. If you take a peek under there, you can see there's a lot of wires. I'm still using the development board at the moment, but down the road I'm hoping to create my own PCB and have proper connectors so that none of these are going to fall out when the car is driving. I've also designed and installed my own encoder circuits. The car has four of these in total, one for each motor or one for each wheel. The sensors detect changes in magnetic fields, and as the motor is spinning around, the magnets pass over the sensor and you can effectively calculate the speed that the motor is rotating. This creates a valuable feedback loop so that I can control the speed of each wheel at any given moment. To demonstrate this, I've shown in the corner here a bunch of live variables that I can view on the PC while the car is running. So in the software, what I'm doing is I'm counting the pulses of the magnets and I'm using that to calculate the RPM. So you can see that as I ramp up the throttle, that variable rear right RPM is increasing and decreasing accordingly. Now let's test this with all four motors. Now I can't throttle too much with the wheels attached as I could damage the belted tires. Now we'll take a look at the steering system and remember for this project I'm taking a bit of a different approach and trying something new. I'm trying dual axis steering where I have one servo controlling each wheel. I'm quite limited here because I had to design this around the power unit and it definitely presents a few design challenges of its own. Alright, so as you saw there, the steering works okay, but there are definitely a few issues that are going to have to be solved. The main one is this wobble that we've got here. Now when I tighten this bolt up, everything's nice and tight and the wheel barely wobbles at all. But the problem that introduces is there's a lot of friction between the floor plate and the lever. So that makes the job of the servo quite difficult to actually get the wheel moving, especially when the tyres are in contact with the ground. Over time, the more you steer the wheel, this bolt here starts to become loose, and what you end up with is this wobble. There's even a little bit of play in the servo horn that you can see there. So as I wobble the wheel, you can see there's a tiny bit of wobble. On its own, that's okay, but when you add in all these other tolerances, such as the rod ends, that all adds up, and you end up with a few degrees of play on the wheel. Now to combat this, what I'm going to do is try something completely different. And looking at this design now, I think I may have overcomplicated it here by adding this lever. I don't really think I need to do that and I can simply change the position of the servos. So what I'm thinking of doing is having the servo sat right on the end, but obviously sat in a different orientation, so this way up. And essentially have the same thing, except where this lever comes out, that'll just be where the servo horn is. That way I'm eliminating all the wobble here on the rod ends 
I'm eliminating the problem of having to tighten this bolt. And as the saying goes, the best part is no part. And I think that's the issue here. So what I'll be doing next is making those changes to the front floor plate. The design changes shouldn't take long at all. The print may take about 24 hours since I do have to reprint the entire front floor plate. As far as everything else goes, I'm really happy with the motors, the encoders and everything are working well. The only issue now that is kind of holding this up is the steering. I'd rather get it right than try and rush it and just have it be wrong. So I will be moving on trying to fix this. As I said, may take a little while, but I'll definitely keep you updated through that process as well. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the project, and I'll see you in the next video.